Hello everyone on the internet. Welcome to another ASU Labs video review. I'm Aaron Schatz, Editor-in-Chief of ASU Publishing. Today we'll be looking at the Synology DS210J with Disk Station Management Software 2.3. This is review ID 12048 and you can check out this and all our other reviews by going to www.aslabs.com. Also subscribe to our YouTube feed and our RSS feed. You'll be in the know, you can leave us some feedback, and we'd love to hear from you. So let's take a look closer at the DS210J. Uh, the front have the status indicators, four green ones up here, a reset button, power button, which is, has a nice blue look for the LED. It's subdued, it's not bright blue. On the bottom you have the open and close area to tell you if it's locked or something. And on the back here you have the screws, the 70 millimeter fan. So let's open this up, show you how to install the drives take out these little screws here on the top and the bottom and then looking at the bottom you can see that it's closed so we'll slide it open and the top part of the case comes right off and here are basically the guts of the unit you can see that I have two drives in it this is pre-installed by Synology but most people probably buy it without drives already installed so there's two 500 gig Seagate drives in here and you can see the space between the drives. There's ample room for airflow. And the drives basically just mount right like this. It's two drives. Put them in, screw them in. They mount, attached by serial ATA, and you're good to go. Here's a 70 millimeter fan in the back here for airflow. Drives didn't get too hot during testing, so you really have nothing to worry about about drive heat. And pretty much this is how you take apart the unit, put it back together, like so. Shut it. Okay. And then you screw it back together and that's basically how you put the drives in the unit. Now to actually show you a little bit how the unit works, we're actually going to turn it on and give you some screen grabs to actually show you the capabilities of the unit. Because if I shot a video with this being on and that's all I'm talking to you, it's not going to be the same thing as me on a computer. So we'll check out some screen grabs and then we'll show you how it actually works on a computer. So let's resituate and we'll get right back to it. Well, now that we're situated on the computer, let's go check out how the Disk Station Manager software works. I'm going to log in right here to the admin account, which brings us to this page, and you want to click Management, which will bring you to the Generic Management page. All these are wizards, so you can create a user, shared folder, etc., etc., using an easy-to-use wizard. But we like to do things a harder way, so I'll show you how to do this manually. But let's check out the status of the unit first. As you can see, I picked out the name ASE Disk Station. Most of the objects on my network have ASE prepended to them, because that's just how I do things. You can see that the temperature of the disks are pretty low right now, and the unit's pulling 16 watts right now, so much less than any x86 server would be. So let's go into the generic shared folder. As any NAS would do, you'd be able to share folders. So let's create a folder. And we'll call it public. And you can give it the description. You can also hide it in My Network Places for Windows. You can also encrypt the folder. But we don't have to do that. It's a public folder. Okay. Now it's asking to set up the privileges now, but we don't have to do that, so let's just click OK. And you can see public is now there, and if I refresh the shares, there's public. All right, so now we want to add a user in. So click users, just user, create, and we'll call it tester, and OK. We'll give it a password of 123, 123. We're not high security here. It's just a local network. But you could get high security if you'd like. We want to add them into a group as well. So let's create another group. And we call it test group. Move description. All right. So let's go into edit the members of this test group. And we're going to add tester that we added before, okay, 
finish. All right, so now that we have the group and the user in that group, we'll go back into the shared folder, go into the public share that we actually created, and we're going to edit the privileges. And it's on local groups, but you can also select the users themselves. Well, let's go to groups. And the users will just give no access, and the test group we can give read-write access. And that's great. So now, if I click this share and I refresh it a little bit, I shouldn't be able to see this. There you go. It's asking me to log in. I'm not going to log in. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to show you a little bit more about how the DS210J works. And let me just say that no matter what I show you, there's going to be tons more that the Disk Station Manager 2.3 software can do, so just read the written portion to get more information. That's the best thing I can tell you. But let's see a little bit more. You have our file sharing. You have Windows, Mac, Linux support by the CIFS service. And one thing you might want to do is enable the CIFS recycle bin. What it basically does is if you delete a file on the share, it'll actually store it in a recycling bin esque kind of thing. So it's not exactly a recycling bin like on Windows, but it's just another folder on the share itself. So if you have a user that keeps deleting files and they need it to recover, you can enable this. That's probably a really nice thing to do. But we don't need that here. You can also share folders by FTP, NFS, and let's go down. The DS210J will also have for you a router configuration. So let's say you have any of the generic routers, you can actually set up the router. Actually, it can set up the router for you to forward ports automatically, but you can do that manually by your router. It also has a simple firewall to enable or disable certain IP addresses. It can also act directly on a PVPoE connection. Like if you have DSL, you can act as the only device on there without a router in front of it, which is always good. The Web Services tab is really cool. This is the one that allows the unit to act as a web server. And you can enable MySQL, and it has PHP enabled by default. So if I go into this, just refresh it to show you that it's actually working. This is a index file that I added, PHP info. As you can see, it's PHP 5.2.12. Linux version is 2.6.24, built on March 13th of this year, and it's an ARM system. Let's go check out the MySQL version. And there. 5.1.34, which isn't too old. I will say that Synology has new beta firmware coming out that's going to make all these versions increase to later versions. So you have to check that out for a later article. All right, a little bit more. Now, most people that have this kind of unit is going to have media on their on their network storage. What you're going to want to do is probably enable the media server. So it makes a UPnP AV server or DLNA server. What this means is if you have a device like the WD TV Live Plus, it will be able to stream directly from this device or any other AV device will. So it's very useful. In addition, you can do iTunes and another cool feature is the audio station. So you want to enable that, and let's open this up, and I'll show you real quick how this works. I have some music on here, and you can see, once I click in here, that I have some CDs and some generic radio stations I recorded. You can also stream your own radio stations, like HBR1, for instance. Now, unfortunately, even though I have Flash 10.1 on this Linux system, it assumes that I don't have Flash, so that's just a bug that I hope will be worked out in the next firmware version. But if you actually plug in a USB sound card to the unit directly, you can actually play it through the unit. And once you click play, you don't have to leave the web browser up for it to continue playing. So that's pretty nifty. You can actually leave this as like a jukebox. Now the other cool thing about this is the download station. Basically, you would want to create a task go to a website that has something you want to download, for instance, Ubuntu. I want to download the x86-64 torrent. 
And then you just put it in this field, the URL field, create. And it'll start downloading automatically without having your computer on. What's also interesting is you want it has settings as well. So you're allowed to actually change the upload and download maximum rates. You don't want to saturate your upload or download bandwidth, so it's pretty important for that. Most people will probably choose HTTP or BitTorrent downloads, maybe some FTP. But since I already have this, I don't need to do this. So we can just end this. Yes. It's processing data. Okay, so now that that's done, let's go back into the management. And let's go into another thing. Ah, the surveillance station. This is really nifty. If you have an IP camera like I do, you could check out the review on the Sky IP cam that we did earlier. You can see it's on here right now, and let's just check out a live view of what's going on. And as you can see, it's facing some door, and that's pretty much how it works. But you can actually send events. It can actually do motion capture, I mean motion events, so that's pretty nifty. You don't have to use the camera for it. You can actually use this software directly, and it'll actually send you notifications. It'll save video automatically. So it's a pretty good DVR system for IP cameras. It has a bunch of cameras that are already pre-set up, and if it doesn't have it in there, you can actually just point it to the MJPEG uh, stream, and it will just work without pause. Let's go back into the management now. The other good thing about this is it can actually share USB printers. And that's pretty nifty if you have, like, one USB printer and you have multiple computers. Just plug this in. It'll actually detect it and share it on the network. And that's pretty cool. This is just some of the features that the Disk Station Manager 2.3 software can actually do. There's much more that it can do, and I can't really show you everything in this video review. But needless to say, Synology makes a great product. The DS210J does a lot of things. So I'm pretty happy with this unit. I really hope that we went over a little bit more about the unit than you ever expected. This is basically a big giant server wrapped up into a really small package. Because it runs Linux and you can actually get into the Linux operating system itself, you basically have full control over the entire computer. And this is a real computer. It runs an ARM processor, so it's Linux for ARM. And you basically have full control over what you want to do with it. The disk station management software is great for point and click people, but for people that really want to hack into the unit, you got full control over the box and that's great. I really hope that you watched the review and you thought, wow, this unit really has a lot of features. And it has so many features, we just can't do them all. And you know what? Synology makes a great product. The DS210J is an excellent thing for small office, home office use. You know, if you have a personal file server that you want to set up, you want a personal web server, you want a download station, an audio station, a surveillance station, this thing does it all. 200 bucks, great deal. AC Labs recommends it. In fact, it's an editor's choice by me. So Synology makes a really, really nice product. AC Labs would like to thank Synology for sending the DS210J for review. You can check out links on ASCLabs.com right now to purchase this product from various merchants. For AC Labs, I'm Aaron Schatz. Thank you for watching. And you know what I'm going to say because I end my reviews the same way all the time. Subscribe to our RSS feed at ASCLabs.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our name is ASE Labs. You can look us up, be in the know. And you know what? Leave us some feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Even if you want to give us some criticism, we could take the criticism. Just leave us some feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much.